With a little bit of VBA, we can use Excel and get the results of a worksheet function for reporting in Access. A wrapper function is defined in VBA and calls another program. A wrapper function is a user-defined function, or UDF, but not vice versa. It is defined as a public function in a standard module so that it can be used universally in Access, such as in the expression for a calculated field in a query. Information is sent to the wrapper function as arguments or parameters, which in turn are passed to Excel's PMT function to calculate the payment for an annuity. The wrapper function then returns that result. Hi, this is Crystal. This is a query called Q Offers that has information from a table called Offers, along with some other calculations. The columns with fields are colored black. The column that is mostly blue has a calculated payment given the loan amount, annual interest rate, number of years, and number of payments per year. It is calculated by a wrapper function defined in VBA that calls Excel's PMT function. Columns with intermediate calculations are displayed in red. Do you like these colors? This was done with the format code. Notice that in the payment column, zero is displayed differently than the rest of the data. This makes it easier to see and to separate. This row probably needs editing. Let's switch to the design view of this query, and let's see how the coloring was done and how the calculations were done. There is only one field list in the source pane. These are the fields in the offers table. All the fields on the grid that aren't calculated come from this table. Three of the fields are calculated. They each have a format code to change color and set how the number will look when it is displayed. Ordinarily, a calculated payment would be negative if the loan amount is positive. Both of these columns appear to be positive. To get a negative value to show without a sign and be colored blue, this format code is used. Bracket, magenta bracket, dollar sign space, number sign, comma, number sign, number sign, zero dot, zero, zero, semicolon. Bracket, blue bracket, dollar sign space, number sign, comma, number sign, number sign, zero, period, zero, zero, semicolon, double quote mark, dash, zero, double quote mark. The first part of the code specifies how positive numbers will look. Parts of the format code are delimited with semicolon and are optional. The second part is for negative numbers, and the third part is for zero. So far, this is the same as for custom format codes used in Excel. In Access, the fourth part of a numeric format code is for no value, which is called null. In Excel, the fourth part is for text, since Excel doesn't recognize null. The color name in square brackets can be black, blue, green, cyan, red, magenta, yellow, or white. You don't see any values in magenta because there aren't any positive numbers. One row has a zero and is just plain black and has no currency symbol. This is probably a row that needs editing. Rate is displayed as a percentage instead of the fraction how it's stored, or actually it's stored in exponential format in this case, and is also colored red. Additionally, a zero is displayed before the decimal point if the value is less than one, since zero is used as a placeholder. When the number sign, octothorpe, Hashtag, pound sign, is used as a placeholder in the format code. A digit only displays for certain conditions if it is a zero. If the number sign is before the decimal point, zero displays if it would not be the highest place value 
or the first digit. If the number sign is after the decimal point, zero will only be displayed if it is not the last digit. The number of periods, n peer, uses bracket red bracket zero to be colored red and show whatever number is calculated. Let's look at the equations that we use to do these calculations. There is a calculated field called payment. It sends five arguments or parameters to the get Excel payment wrapper function, which calls Excel's PMT function. The first two arguments, rate, which is the periodic rate, and n peer, which is the number of periods, are also calculated fields. The other parameters for this function are fields in the offers table the loan amount, future value, and payment type. Notice that it is OK for an intermediate calculation to be defined after the column where it is referenced. The periodic rate is the annual rate divided by the number of payments per year. The number of periods is the number of years times the number of payments per year. Looking again at the datasheet view, we can see that monthly payments for a small house that cost $25,000 would be $353.35 if it is financed at 5% for seven years. The house needs some repair. So an uncle will loan $1,000 such that $500 is paid back by annually. You can switch to the SQL view by choosing it from the View drop-down on the ribbon, or by right-clicking on a blank spot of the query design and choosing SQL view from the shortcut menu. The SQL statement shows in words what the query design displays graphically. The text is small, so here is the statement in Notepad. Line breaks have been added to make it easier to read. In an SQL statement, anywhere it is OK to have a space, it is also OK to have a line break. The first part of a SELECT SQL statement is what to select, fields and calculated fields, then from whatever table name, then order by however you want it sorted. One of the calculated fields calls the getXLPMT function, so let's look at that code. Press Alt F11 to go to a VBA window. What you see on the right is a standard module with VBA code for the getXLPMT function and the Excel close sub. In the properties window, we can see the name of this module. And we can also see the name in the title bar, or the first part of it anyway. There is actually another module in this database with the same functionality as this one. You could comment the simplified module and uncomment the other one if you want to. That way you can study the code and also see how to use an existing instance of Excel if it's already open when you set the Excel object going back to the simplified version. Directly below the option statements at the top of the module, an object variable called OXL is defined. By dimensioning this at the top, before any procedures are defined, all procedures in this module will be able to see it, use it, and reuse it. This helps performance and stability. Next comes the getXLPMT function declaration. Space underscore at the end of a line means the statement is continued on the next line. After the function name are parentheses that surround the arguments or parameters. There are five of them. They are the same as what Excel's PMT function uses. Periodic rate, number of periods, present value, future value, and payment type. 
and then the data type for the return value of the function is specified. Initially, an error handler is defined so code can exit without the user realizing there is a problem, if there is one. Right after that, zero is assigned for the default return value. That way, if any error happens, the result will be zero and not an error message. If the return data type for the function was variant instead of currency, the function could return null, but that would compromise the precision of the real values. Even though it is not as flexible, currency is used for accuracy. The currency data type can have 15 digits before a decimal point and carries only four digits after the decimal point. If a real value can't be calculated, zero is returned. There are actually other fields in the offers table for discount points, which can also handle rebate points and origin points, but they are not considered in this example. Now that we've declared the function and its parameters, set up the error handler and assigned an initial return value, we are now ready to use Excel to do the calculation. First, we see if Excel is loaded and ready to use. The OXL object is tested. If it is nothing, that means it is not yet set. In that case, an Excel application object is created. That means Excel is opened. The variable named OXL will be used to represent the Excel application. Once it is set, it can be reused, so subsequent calls are faster. Finally, Excel's PMT function is called. The same five parameters sent to the wrapper function are passed to Excel's PMT function. The calculated result is assigned as the return value for the wrapper function, and then the code exits. The Excel close sub quits Excel and clears the Excel object variable, but getXLPMT does not call it. Once the query is run, Excel will stay open in the background until it is closed, so future processing is faster. If you press Ctrl-Alt-Delete and choose the Task Manager for Windows, you will see Excel running as a background process. One way to clean things up is to put a command button on a form to open the query, and then call Excel close in the form unload event, so cleanup is done when the form is closed. In summary, you've learned how to write a wrapper function that is universally understood in Access. This example showed how to use this function in the expression for a calculated field. You saw how a query with several rows can show a calculation made by a wrapper function that calls Excel. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.